this lecture will give an idea of what point groups and space groups are in crystallography. These are two important concepts and these help us in finding out the precise locations of atoms at and around lattice points and also in the three dimensional extended crystal. In simple metals, In simple metals, uh, when we talk about a unit cell, the lattice points in the unit cell are occupied by one atom each. Say for example, if we have a crystal of pure iron then the lattice is body centered cubic. So, in the unit cell there are 8 corner points and 1 body centered point. When you put the iron atoms at these lattice positions, then it becomes the unit cell of an iron crystal. In simple metals, one atom is associated with each lattice point, but there are complex systems where each lattice point may be associated with more than one atoms. Now, when such a situation arises, how to figure out the locations of the atoms around a lattice point? The fact is, in such cases, the atoms are not located in a random fashion or in a haphazard way, but there are some rules which dictate where the individual atoms surrounding a lattice point will be. Let us take a very simple case. Say again, we have got a unit cell of a material, say in the cubic system, and say, suppose that this is a simple cubic unit cell with eight points of the eight corners. Now, if every lattice point here is associated with say four atoms, so here 
suppose there are four atoms associated with each of the lattice points as shown Say we have a material, the unit cell of which has four number of atoms associated with each lattice point as shown on the board. Say for example, these four atoms here, they lie on the same plane, say they are lying in a plane which is parallel to the top surface which is the 0, 0, 001 plane. Similarly, say at all these four locations, the atoms are lying on a plane parallel to the top plane. Similarly, let us suppose that in all the four cases here, the four atoms around each lattice point, they all are lying on the plane which is the 0, 0 bar 1 plane. That means this particular, the bottom plane. So, we have a situation where we have a cubic unit cell of a material at the top four uh, corners of the unit cell, there are four atoms per lattice point and they lie in the same plane, the 0, 0, 001 plane and the bottom again there are four lattice points and four atoms are surrounding each lattice point there and the atoms lie on the 0, 0, bar 1 plane. So, these are parallel planes. Now, how can we rationalize the location of the different atoms around this part, a particular lattice point? Say for example, here at this lattice point, we have got four different, four atoms surrounding it in the same plane. So, if we assume for example, that there is a fourfold rotor perpendicular to the top plane, then we can explain given the location of one of the atoms where the other three atoms are going to be. So, if we assume that yes, at each lattice point in this unit cell, there is a fourfold rotor lying in this manner, then you can, we can rationalize the locations of each and every atom around the lattice points. Now, this is quite interesting. Say for example, if on the other hand, we had instead of 4, if we had 8 atoms per unit cell, a uh, per lattice point in this unit cell and if it so happened that at each lattice point on top of the lattice point there are four atoms and slightly below the lattice point there are another four atoms. How can we rationalize the location of these eight atoms at this particular lattice point? If we assume that there is a fourfold rotor going in this direction, the c direction, the z direction and side by side, if there is a mirror perpendicular to that, then the combination of these two symmetry elements will help us to rationalize the locations of those eight atoms at this particular unit cell. So, simply because there is a fourfold rotor, so there will be from one position of the atom, 
we can find out the positions of the other three and if there is a mirror perpendicular to that, so we will have another four which are reflected through the mirror. So, there will be eight atoms and their locations can be rationalized. Now, we have already seen that several symmetry elements are available to us. For example, you can have a mirror or a reflection plane of reflection, plane of symmetry, then rotation axis, maybe a fourfold rotation axis, a threefold rotation axis, a twofold rotation axis, and also a sixfold rotation axis, then an inversion center or an inverter, and also a rotation inversion axis. So, all these symmetry elements are available to us. Now, if we look at the innumerable number of crystals and look at the locations of the atoms around a lattice point, the unit cells, unit cells of these crystals, then we find that the locations of the atoms around a lattice point can be easily rationalized by assuming a single uh, such symmetry element or a combination of such symmetry elements. In the example just given by me, if there are four atoms per lattice point in one plane, then the whole thing, the location of the atoms can be rationalized by assuming a fourfold rotor passing through the lattice point. If on the other hand, you have got eight atoms at this particular lattice point, four of them above and four of them below, then their locations can be rationalized by assuming as if there is a fourfold rotor and a mirror perpendicular to that rotor at each and every lattice point. So, we have to figure out, it can be seen that you know by X-ray diffraction experiments, it is quite possible to figure out what kind of symmetry elements can be invoked in order to explain the locations of the different atoms around the lattice point. So, it is a question of finding out which symmetry elements can be invoked, whether it is a single symmetry element or a group of symmetry elements at a lattice point. Now, a point group is defined as a collection of symmetry elements at a lattice point. A point group is defined as a collection of symmetry elements at a lattice point, which will allow us to explain the location of all the atoms around that lattice point. So, you see that here for example, when we had four atoms surrounding this particular lattice point and the atoms were lying in one plane, then the symmetry element involved was a fourfold rotor, a fourfold rotor. And when we consider a situation where there are eight atoms per lattice point, in that case four in one plane, four in a plane parallel to that, then their locations can be explained by assuming a fourfold rotor which is perpendicular to a reflection plane. We can write it in this manner. So, you see that assuming that such a symmetry element acts at each and every lattice point of the unit cell, we can explain the atom positions in a particular unit cell. In another case, by assuming that two symmetry elements, a fourfold rotor and a mirror are present together at a lattice point, we can explain the locations of the eight atoms per lattice point in a unit cell. So, as I already mentioned, the point groups 
are nothing but a collection of symmetry elements at a lattice point which will allow us to find out the locations of all the atoms surrounding that particular lattice point. Now, so it is a question of in how many different ways all the symmetry elements we know about can be combined so that each combination will have a distinct arrangement of atoms which is indistinguishable one from the other. Uh, I am sorry, which is distinguishable one from the other. So, what we are looking at is how many such combinations are possible, combination of symmetry elements are possible and each such combination should yield a distinct pattern of atoms which is completely different from those given by the other combinations. So, in this manner it has been found that a maximum of 32 such combinations are possible. A maximum of 32 such combinations are possible and hence we say that there are 32 point groups. So, there are 32 different combinations of the different symmetry elements we know about. Each combination giving rise to a pattern of atoms which is totally different from the others. So, now we can see that the symmetry elements that we have they can be combined in 32 different ways and which symmetry elements are involved rotation symmetry like the axis of symmetry, then inversion symmetry, then reflection symmetry and roto inversion symmetry. So, there are 32 different combinations of these symmetry elements which will lead us to 32 distinct arrangements of atoms around a lattice point. So, all such compounds are categorized into 32 possible crystal classes. So, there are 32 point groups or 32 possible crystal classes. Now, each crystal class of course, belongs to one of the seven crystal systems which we have already described. Now, so far as point groups are concerned, the symmetry elements can be thought of as operators. What is meant by an operator? Say for example, if we take a plane of symmetry or a mirror plane as shown here, if there is a point on the left hand side by reflection through the mirror, another point will be produced on the other side at e equal distance from the mirror. Again, if you have a point here by reflection through the mirror at exactly the same distance on the opposite side another point is created. We can say that a plane of symmetry or a mirror acts as an operator. So, what is its function? Its function is to cause reflection and what happens due to reflection? One point will generate one more point. So, a mirror plane or a plane of symmetry it will generate one point from another from a given point. So, there are two equivalent points for a mirror plane symmetry. Now, here the operation of the mirror plane has been illustrated. Say for example, if we have a plane in the y z uh, plane 
if you have a plane in the yz plane then what will happen this is a mirror if you have, if you have a mirror in the yz plane if we take a point here whose coordinates are x y and z then after reflection through this mirror the point will come here so p the point p gets reflected to the mirror comes over there and what are the coordinates of that now its x coordinate is minus x y coordinate doesn't change z coordinate doesn't change so the point x y z becomes the point bar x y z by reflection through the mirror operator we can say that the mirror operator produces two equivalent points the given point p and the one produced is p dashed now when we deal with a fourfold rotation axis or a fourfold rotor it acts as a operator so it acts as a rotor operator so what is this function say if we have a fourfold rotor if it is rotating in the anti clockwise direction say so this is the x axis this is the y axis and this is the z axis so if we have a point with the coordinates x y z this is x this much is y this much is z due to the rotation of the fourfold rotor the next position of this point will be p1 and its coordinates will be bar y x z the third position will be p2 bar x bar y bar z and the fourth position will be here p3 y bar x z so you see that due to the presence of a fourfold rotor along the z direction if we have a point p x y z with x y z coordinates then three more points are produced due to the rotation operation and how many equivalent points we find here four so a fourfold rotor operator will have four equivalent points will give us four equivalent points now if we look at the function of an inverter what happens say again this is x axis this is the y axis and this is the z axis if we have a point p with coordinates x y z and if we have an you know inversion point at o then what will happen this point will produce a point p prime and the coordinates of p if it is x y z the coordinates of p prime will be x bar y bar and z bar so you see that if you have an inversion operation then there are two equivalent points produced now so far as naming of the point groups are concerned there are two different ways the older system is known as the schoenflies system the older system is known as the schoenfly system and the newer system is known as the harman bromwin system this second one is also known as the international system so following these systems point groups have been given certain nomenclature say for example in the schoenfly system c with a subscript n refers to a point group which contains just one rotation axis nothing else so if it is c2 
it means that this refers to a point group where each lattice point is associated with simply a twofold rotor. This is the way a twofold rotor is shown. Now, in case of a threefold rotation axis, we can have a point group having just one threefold rotation axis, then in the Schoenfly system, it is written as C3, just as in the twofold rotation axis in the Schoenfly system, it is written as C2. Similarly, for a fourfold rotation axis, the point group can be written as C4. Now, in case a point group is obtained by combining a rotor and a horizontal mirror as shown here, for example, they are written as C subscript NH in the Schoenfly system. So, here we have got a fourfold rotor along the z direction and a horizontal mirror in the x y plane. So, according to the Schoenfly's notation, it can be written as C subscript 4 H. On the other hand, if the rotor is parallel to the mirror plane, so it is a vertical mirror, then the Schoenfly system is written as C subscript N V. Here, unfortunately, that V is missing. So, it will be C N V. So, in this particular case, since a twofold rotor, it will be C 2 and since there is a vertical mirror, so it will be C 2 V. Now, in the Schoenfly system, a point group is denoted as D subscript N and what it means? If in a system, if in a point group, you have got a twofold rotor with two other twofold rotors which are mutually perpendicular and both of them are per perpendicular to the first rotor, in that case such a point group is given the designation D2. So, this is another type of point group notation, another point group notation by the Schoenfly system. Now, D subscript NH stands for if you have a twofold rotor with another two perpendicular rotors lying perpendicular to the original rotor and if there is a horizontal plane perpendicular to the original twofold rotor, then according to Schoenfly's it will be D 2 H. Uh, again, D subscript N V stands for the case where the mirror is not a horizontal mirror, but a vertical mirror. So, in this case, it will be D 2 V. In this Schoenfeld's notation, there are point groups denoted by S subscript N and it means a roto reflection or roto inversion axis. So, if it is written as S subscript 4, it means a fourfold roto reflection or roto inversion axis. Another uh, notation is capital T that refers to a combination of symmetry elements that are possible to have for a tetrahedron. And what are those symmetry elements you can have in a tetrahedron? For example, four threefold rotation axis as well as three twofold rotation axis. So, this is the kind of symmetry we can observe in a tetrahedron and this combination of symmetry elements is denoted by the letter capital T. Then another combination of symmetry elements is designated as O, capital O in the Schwenfly system and in this there are three fourfold rotors plus 
four threefold rotors plus six twofold rotors. So the O in Schwenfly system refers to a point group containing three fourfold rotors, four threefold rotors, and six twofold rotors. Now, when we come to the other system, the more modern one, the Harman Morgan system or the international system, nomenclature is quite, uh, it is more easy. Say, for example, here a single, a point group with a single rotation axis is denoted by a number. Say, for example, if we have simply a point group which is simply a fourfold rotation axis, it is denoted by the number 4. So, if for a twofold rotation axis, it is denoted by 2. If it is a threefold rotation axis, it is denoted by 3, etc., etc. Now, if we have a number with a bar on top of it, as shown in this diagram, that will mean a roto inverter. So, a 4 with a bar means a fourfold roto inverter. Similarly, you can have a twofold roto inverter, threefold roto inverter, etc., etc. If you have a sign like this on the number, that will indicate a roto reflector. So, if we have a sign like this, say for example, here we have a fourfold roto reflector. So, because if the rotor come reflector, what happens? During its rotation, first 90 degree rotation, point A1 will come to this point here and then it will get reflected through a mirror plane and come to this. So, this point will produce this point by its action. Now, when a number is put on top of the letter M as here, it means a rotor with a horizontal mirror perpendicular to the rotor. So, if we write it as 2 by M, it means a twofold rotor with a mirror perpendicular to it. it that means it is a horizontal mirror. Now, X M in this system, you know, if you have say a twofold rotor and a vertical mirror, so it will be written as 2 M. So, if it is a threefold rotor with a vertical mirror, it will be 3 M, etcetera, etcetera. Now, when it is written as X bar M, it means it is a combination of a of an inversion axis with a mirror as shown over here. Say for example, here we have a fourfold inversion axis and there is a vertical mirror. So, we can write this point group as bar 4 m. Sometimes you have got point groups which are written as x 2, x stands for a number. Say for example, if you have a fourfold rotor and there is a combined with a twofold rotor perpendicular to it, then this point group can be written as 4, 2. There are cases of a point group where we combine a rotor with two mirrors, one vertical, one horizontal, as in this particular case. So, here we have a twofold rotor along the z direction and then there is a vertical mirror containing the twofold rotor and a horizontal mirror perpendicular to the twofold rotor. So, how this combination of symmetry elements can be written is written as 2 by m m. Now, the point groups can also be represented in the form of a stereographic projection. Say for example, here we have a 
point group, as you can easily see, there is a combination of two symmetry elements here. There is a two-fold rotation axis in the z direction, the principal axis, and there is a, you know, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, it, yeah, it's a simple, it is a simple two-fold rotation axis. So here we are dealing with a case, a point group, which just has one two-fold rotation axis, a two-fold rotor acting in the z direction. Then what we do, we take a projection plane perpendicular to the two-fold rotor. So we have a two-fold rotor in the z direction. We take a projection plane perpendicular to that. And if we do that, and if we draw the stereographic projection here, though what we'll find? We'll find that the two-fold rotor will appear at the center of the projection plane. So it will be over here. So it will be over here. Now, if we have a point, uh, you know, in this quadrant, due to the operation of the two-fold rotor, it will generate another point in this quadrant. So if it so happens, what we'll find at 180 degrees away, so this is the given projection of an equivalent point, and this is a projection of a given point. So if we have a given point, and if we have a projection, you know, the, and, and due to the two-fold rotation axis, it will produce a second point. Now, since the rotor is in the z direction. So what will happen when you take a point and use the rotor, um, you know, to act, use the two-fold rotation axis to act as a rotor, this given point will produce another point. And since the rotor is the z direction, the xy coordinates of the given point and the point is which is produced, they are the same. That means the point and the equivalent point produced out of it, they are at the same level. So that's the reason why if this is the projection of a given point, this is the projection of an equivalent point. You see, if the point, the point that is produced by the action of the rotor is at a different level, then instead of a closed circle, we represent it by an open circle, as will be clear pretty soon. Say, for example, we talk about the point group 2M. So if we have a point group 2M, it means we have a two-fold rotor along the z-axis and a mirror which contains the vertical mirror which contains the two-fold rotor. Now, how we can uh, represent this in the form of a stereographic projection. Normally, the projection plane is the xy plane. That means the projection plane is perpendicular to the z axis along which the rotor lies. So naturally, the position of the rotor will be shown by a point right at the center of projection because the projection plane is taken along xy plane. So we will have a projection and the two-fold rotor will be lying right at the center of the projection. Now, so if we have a point here, what will happen? That point will produce an equivalent point at 180 degree because it's a two-fold rotor. But, you know, the two points, the equivalent, the two points will be at the same level because the rotor is along the z direction. Say, for example,
So if we have a two-fold rotor along the z direction, and then if we have a point P over here, then due to the rotation, suppose it, the rotor goes in an anti-clockwise direction, rotates in an anti-clockwise direction, so it will rotate and come to this point at 180 degrees. So they are, as you can see that, the z coordinate doesn't change. That means they are at the same level. They are at the same level. Now, if we have a vertical mirror, now if we have a vertical mirror like this, if we have a vertical mirror like this, then what will happen? The mirror, the mirror will reflect the given point and its equivalent. The mirror will reflect the given point and its equivalent. So P will be reflected to the mirror, P prime will be reflected from the mirror. So the whole thing can be shown in the form of a stereographic projection. Say for example, if we take a stereographic projection parallel to the x, y plane, if we take the stereographic projection parallel to the x, y plane, then where will this, so this is my projection plane. So this two-fold rotor will come right at the center of the stereographic projection. So it will come right at the center of the stereographic projection. So I've got my two-fold rotor here. This is my projection plane. So where will be the mirror? This is the vertical mirror lying in the x, z plane. So now we have got this is the y, this is the x, and this is the z. So we have a mirror in the x, z plane. So our mirror will be over here. So our mirror in the stereographic projection will lie in this fashion. The mirror will be lying in this fashion. So if we have a projection plane like this, right at the center of the projection, there will be the two-fold rotor. The x axis will be over here, y will be projected over here, and then the vertical mirror, this vertical mirror will come as a line like this. So if we have a point P, if we have a point, given point P over here, if we have a given point P or given point 1, say, say we have a given point 1, due to the two-fold rotor, the next, you know, by rotation, the next position of the point will be over here. So it will be like this. So 1 will produce the point 2. Now, because there is a mirror here, this point will be reflected through the mirror and come over here. Again, because of this mirror, this point will be reflected to the mirror and come over here. Say this is point number 3, this is point number 4. So we can see that due to the operation of a two-fold rotor with a vertical mirror as shown here, from one point we produce three other points. So there are four equivalent points due to the operation of this kind of a point group. So that is what is shown that the point group 2M will produce, you know, uh, point from point 1, it will produce point 2, 2 will produce 3 by reflection to the mirror and 1 will produce 4 by reflection to the mirror and we will have 4 equivalent points produced due to the operation of the point group 2M. So what will be situation like when we uh, represent a point group uh, uh, 2 by m in the form of a stereographic projection? So here the mirror is not vertical but it is horizontal. So in the projection the mirror will be 
this along the periphery of the stereographic projection. So, the mirror position is like this. So, from point 1, the closed circle, due to the operation of the twofold mirror, point 2 will be produced and then they will reflect through the mirror. So, now the position of the points, you know, they will be at a different level, not at the same level as 1 and 2, because the mirror is lying parallel to the surface, parallel to the plane here. So, 2 will produce, the point 2 will produce the point 3 by reflection through this horizontal mirror and point 1 will produce point 4 by reflection to the horizontal mirror. So, here also there are 4 equivalent points, but 2 are at the same level 1 and 2, whereas 3 and 4 are at a different level. That is why 1 and 2 are shown as closed circles and 3 and 4 are shown as open circles. Now, if we look at say the point group given by bar 4, that means a roto inverter, then what will happen? So, as shown earlier, if we take a projection plane parallel to the x y plane, then what will happen? At the center of the projection, we will have the fourfold rotor, you know, it will project it over here. And if you have a point here, then what will happen? Because this point group is four, four bar four means it does two things simultaneously. That means it rotates followed by immediately by uh, inversion. So, it rotates and then inverts. So, let us see if we had a point 1 here and if it were a simple fourfold rotor, then 1 would have produced 2, would have produced 3, would have produced 4, all at the same level. But because it is a fourfold roto inverter, it rotates and then inverts. So, 1 should have gone there as a uh, solid circle, as a closed circle, but then it gets inverted at a different level, it becomes an open circle. And then next is another rotation, it should come over here as an open circle, but then gets inverted, so it becomes, goes to another level uh, by the, represented by the closed circle. And since the next rotation, because you know four rotations are necessary for a fourfold rotor, it should have gone here as an closed circle, then gets inverted to this and becomes an open circle. So, you see that here also there are four equivalent points, two are at one level and two are at a different level. Now, when we talk about all these point groups, each point group consists of a single rotation axis only, then we can see, we can represent them as simple uh, stereographic projections as shown here. So, for the rotation axis 1, the point 1 does not produce any other point because you know it is a 360 rotation and it brings it to the same point then comes rotation axis 2. Say here, we take the rotation axis in the y direction. So, if we take a projection, then the twofold rotor will come over here and if we have a point 1, it will produce a point 2 over here. But you see, here the z, the level of the two points is totally different. That is why one is represented by a closed circle, the other one is represented by an open circle. So, if there is a threefold rotor and if the rotor is now in the z direction, then if you take a projection, then in the projection plane, the rotor's position will be at the center. So, if there is a point 1, due to the rotation, 1 will produce 2, 2 will produce 3, etcetera, etcetera. Please remember a threefold rotor can exist in the hexagonal system and that is why here we have got four axes x, y, u and z. So, this is the situation of the threefold 
rotor. And as we have already seen, if there is a fourfold rotor, again, at the, along the z direction, one will produce two, two will produce three, three will produce four. I'm sorry, this is misspelled as one. This will be number four. So four equivalent points are produced. And again, if you have a six-fold rotor, a point group which consists only of a six-fold rotor, such rotors are possible only in a hexagonal system. And if the rotor is along the z direction, then we find one will produce two, two will produce three, three will produce four, four will produce five, five will produce six. So you see that from one point, we get extra five points. So there are six equivalent points in the uh, point group denoted by 6.